Hello everyone, this is Sebastiano Mereu with a 90 Minutes Japan Gamba update. Gamba Osaka won 3 to 2 goals against Davispa Fukuoka in round 14 of this J2 campaign. Yes, Gamba Osaka lost their first match of the season last Monday to table toppers Vissel Kobe and didn't look very confident, in my opinion, against FC Gifu in the match before that either. However, today against Abispa, Gamba showed up with good attitude, willing to hold the ball as much as possible and most importantly with a strong will to bring home 3 points. The most surprising lineup change for me was seeing Paulinho starting next to Leandre in attack. I guess Hasegawa gave him that shot because Paulinho scored a couple of times against Abispa when he played for Wenfore Kofu in 2010-2011. I actually think he contributed a lot to Gamba's win today and I liked him a lot. In defense I have to give kudos to Kono for keeping Abispa striker Kanamori at bay. It was a good idea to bring him back into the back four after all. And in midfield we gotta give credit as oh so often to Captain Endo for directing his team like a Fortune 500 CEO. And yes, bodying up Leandro with Kurata again was the only right thing to do to bring back the scoring Gamba. Well, this is my opinion about today's match, but let's hear what our friend Thomas Burge of Gamba Osaka Pride has to say. Gamba bounced back well today against Vispa Fukuoka after our defeat on Monday to Vissel Kobe while winning today's match 3-2. The scoreline suggests that the match was a close one but that could not be further from the truth. We dominated the first half and had many chances to score through Leandro and Paulinho in particular and it was our top scorer who got the goals before the half time interval. I was delighted with the lead but I was even happier with our style and fluidity when attacking with Vispa giving us too much space. This was a complete opposite to what Kobe did on Monday. I was really pleased with our pressing play which was basically the foundation of the first two goals. Enjoy and Fujiharu were both standouts for me, the former winning the ball back in midfield for the first goal, whilst the latter got two assists from left back and was a threat all day long. Kurata's return to the position in behind Leandro worked a treat, as did the surprise inclusion of Paulinho who worked hard and on another day would have scored. After he and Futagawa were subbed, Avispa scored two stunning goals and showed a good personality to get back to 3-2 but we showed some resilience under pressure to get the deserved 3 points. I wanted to see Gamba so some good character after our first defeat last weekend and I could not fault the players for that. The goals conceded with a negative point as we relaxed a bit too early but I cannot be too negative as Hasegawa made some good changes to the team and even though the substitute slowed us down a bit, moving back to just three points behind Fisal Kobe is what counts. As Thomas just mentioned, Gamba is back in second spot behind Vissel Kobe and one point ahead of Dark Horses we were in Nagasaki. Next Sunday we will be hosting relegation fighters Tespaku Satsu Gunma at Bampaku and chase that number one spot. By the way, if you want more details on Gamba Osaka matches, check out the Gamba Osaka Pride podcast hosted by Thomas Birch. Often you hear me ramble about all things Gamba. You might enjoy it. The J League is over for this week, but we're already counting the days until the next round. I am Sebi, and thank you for watching 90 Minutes Japan Gamba Update.